Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here with round two action, and we just saw Jimmy pretty convincingly win round one. Yeah, <laughs> with the same variant of Zorok he's been using to pretty much uh, dominate the past few expanded tournaments he's played in and just uh, played a Zorok size so to great effect, able to win against uh, against Chance and uh, advance to a swift 1-0 here at the Dallas Regional Championships. Yeah, and then of course we just saw a video on that Vestaquin Flareon Maxi's deck, and that's actually a deck we're going to feature this round, but in the hands of a person you wouldn't really think to choose this deck, uh, they really just choose the deck they think is perfect for the tournament, and that is Ross Cawthon. Yeah, it one is. One of the greatest to ever play this game, and he has decided that Vestaquin Flareon could possibly be the best deck this tournament. I mean, you, you say that it's a sort of like you wouldn't necessarily play, but I mean, he has piloted Vesper Quentin's success before. He had, did, of course, to get a good finish up with it at Worlds 2016. That so, you know, he does have that. history with the deck. And here we have it. Uh, Ian Robb on your left. Uh, no Slouch himself has been a pretty dominant player ever since moving up into Masters Division. Yep. I think two years ago at Dallas, uh, he was doing pretty well with that Mega Gardevoir deck. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's... Uh, they definitely, like I said, uh, no slouch himself. Absolutely fant fantastic player. Um, he will have. He will be playing. It looks to be Drampa Garboda. And yes, yeah. back from the past a little bit. Uh, kind of tucked away. Zora kind of dominated most of the thing, and now it's like, well, I think Trash Lanch is good again. Yeah, uh, it's uh, a lot of these uh, Zorak variants. Of course, they do tend to be quite item heavy, so you can get some. Even with Zorak's <laughs> resistance, you can get some like decent. Uh, he, <laughs> Ultra Ball's away that Latio CX2 with that fast rate attack. One Psychic, 40 damage. Trying to steal some victories away <laughs> here, I see. Uh, hey, hey, man, they can KO a ditto, you know? Yeah. And uh, Ross, meanwhile, his turn was not good. Uh, looking at his hand, it looks like Ian Mulligan uh, once or twice as well. And all he did was farewell letter from Unknown. Play a ditto and pass. Uh, not what you want to see. No, definitely not. That is uh, far from ideal. Meanwhile... In having the ultra by merit of having the ultra ball already has a better start than Ross. He's uh, able to look through his deck, find out what he has access to and what he doesn't, and uh, yeah, gets. Op ops with that Trubbish, the garbage collection, has that Tapu Lele in hand, and yeah, so got Juniper turn one's pretty good. You don't need Bridget, you got two Trubbish in yeah. play. I'm, I'm liking the choice of the the uh, uh, Juniper over the Sycamore there. Uh, of course you would. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you would. <laughs> and, and what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, double colorless energy to top it off uh, could have the option of dealing 20 with Righteous Edge or even 50 with oh, Righteous 50. Edge. Okay, yeah, I like that a lot better than 20. Yeah, that, that enables the two-shot if you can yeah. follow up with the Berserk next turn. But looking like he's going to big wheel here. Oh. Berserk one-shots anyway. With it the does. So, so why not big wheel? One of the OG uh, GX attacks to be used. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, big wheel GX. Shuffle your hand into your deck. Draw 10 cards. Nice. Plain, simple, clean. It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and when you know your opponent didn't have an end last turn. Yeah. Pretty safe. Yep. Uh, Ross is going to need a good top deck here, actually. Can't think of it. This, uh, his hand, as we well, we can see, his hand oh, yeah, is... Oh, his hand is bad. Yeah, Ultra Ball, maybe Computer Search would be a good top deck. Teammates, that is not a good top deck. No, it, it'll be good next turn when Ian inevitably knocks out this uh, Shaman, but... Yeah, that but you need Combies down now. Yeah, I was going to say, this might be too, too little too late. He does have a Vesperquen in his hand. He could evolve to from the Ditto here. He, doesn't he might have to, because if uh, Ian gets that Garbatoxin active next turn, your Ditto is useless. Exactly. So, opposite to evolve there. And uh, But other we, than that... We could see maybe a Guzma on the Sudowoodo just to try to buy a little time, yeah. because Ian is threatening yeah. with that Drampa. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, Ross had a Battle Compressor in his hand last turn and didn't play it. He only just played it now. What can wow, you do? Yeah. What, what the reasoning for, but what would the reasoning behind that be? I wonder. Uh, so it is a little bit awkward the way his hand is because his hand has a lot of the cards that he would battle compressor away, like Machoke or maybe Marowak, stuff like that. Um, but not being able to search through his deck, like he just blind farewell letter. Uh, so it's really just decision making. Uh, is it worth it to discard three cards from my deck and a supporter, and then maybe farewell letter into the versus seeker? Or just run my odds and draw the supporter anyway. But, yeah, possibly. I think that even, yeah, I don't know. Because you could just, 
a feral letter and then just battle compressor anyway, because then if you miss it, then you know you can just compress away some non-supporter things, and then maybe yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's a weird one. All right, and debating that final card. It looks like execute Juniper so far. Both players opting for Professor Juniper here. I guess you're pretty excited. Yeah, <laughs> that's. It's a it's it's almost a, it's almost a nostalgia thing because uh, like when I first started playing it was at the or competitively it was at the end of 2011 and that was when Juniper had, well, was only like one set old because it was around around the time Emerging Powers and Noble Bitches of the format so it's uh, kind of a to me it's like a throwback to when I started playing. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that that's the last time I was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, don't beat yourself up. Uh, and one thing about this Vesquin deck that. Uh, you saw earlier in the video package, but mm -hmm. it's really, you have to play your resources correctly. Yeah. You can't just battle compressor all your Pokemon and then hope to be revenge. Wait, revenge. Ross just Sky returned. Oh, wow. Um, he just needs an energy to win. Well, no, uh, he only does 80. Oh, so oh yeah, of course. So he needs something to wait to do damage to the bench. And so then sometimes uh, the Drampa Garb deck opts for a split of Muscle Band and Choice Band. We could see something like that. Um, he also probably held the battle compressor because of item count. I don't know. Possibly, yeah. Um, but there's no real way for Ian to do 90 damage consistently. No. At least with this board state, Berserk does more damage, but only if you have uh, the extra damage on your bench. Right, okay. The, so that, that makes a bit more sense. Then. I, I just thought that was a massive risk that Ross was taking, but when you sort of put it that way, it uh, makes a bit more sense. There's a mysterious treasure. Discard say Sarola. He's probably gonna look through to see if he can actually go for this uh, win option here. It's not looking like it. Uh, Ross is able to like kind of set up his hand a little. Yeah, you actually see his hand. It's Machoke and Glade, two cards you would want a uh, battle compressor away. That is so so rough. <laughs> Definitely not the kind of situation you want to be in. Uh, in <laughs> so he discards the Acerola, uses the other one, and I think we're just gonna see an energy drive here. Parallel City 2. Gets rid of the Tudorudo. Yeah, double colorless. Yeah, Ian's definitely playing this smart choice band, which he picked up from the Drampa. Now putting it on that Garbatox and on the bench. Shaman will not have an ability no, anymore. That, no, that is very, very smart play there from Ian. Now limiting Ross's options, even with that Shaman that he just picked up. He thought, you know, maybe he could use that to draw a few more cards, but no, not an option anymore with the choice band on the Garboda. And it looks like he drew Zeb Strike of a turn as well. Oh, that's not what you want to see. No. Looks like a little bit of shaking here, but... You know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's to highlight it's the action, you it's know. It's like paranormal activity. It, yeah. it, it follows the camera around. And <laughs> the, it, Cloverfield, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Intense Pokemon trading card game and dueling <laughs> going on right here. So with the Parallel City, uh, it's super smart the way you played it. You get rid of the Pseudo Widow, something you don't really need in this matchup. And then you also limit your opponent's damage output. And... Most of the time, they probably play like one parallel city themselves and nothing else. Uh, so it's really hard for them to bump out of it, and it they just need essentially two extra Pokemon. Yeah. And uh, there's a Guzma from Ross opting to just bring out the Garbodo with the Choice Band. Uh, Ian draws. All he needs now is a Field Blower and Float Stone to win this match, or this game rather. Hey, well, this is your game plan. Uh, you just bring up that Garbodo and hope to. Stall it a little okay. bit. Uh, you want to buy a couple turns. Yeah. Ross needs a lot yes. of cards to get going. You, you could uh, even. It's a shame that Ian doesn't have access to that second Acerola because if he did, he could have just rainbowed the Garb and then won that way. Yeah, and that's also a, a reason that Ross did like play Shaman, does double call the Sky Return. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if you put damage on it, it just opens more outs to Acerola. Yeah. And you know, there's two in Ian's discard. Exactly. Although the fact that there's two, uh, let's see. Yeah, there is no. Oh no, there is Versigur. <laughs> I was about to say there's no Versigur. There's four. No, no, that would be that would be something else. Um, yeah, we look, have a look at Ian Rob's list now. Uh, looks like he's playing. Yeah, he's playing the four, the full complement of four Versigur. He's playing four Floatstone as well, and what looks to be one Field Blower. So that is a play he can go for potentially. Whether he's able to find it or not is another matter. Man, if you think about the way this matchup is for Ian, he is completely teched to the nines. Uh, basically, that Latio CX, you have Drampa to discard double colorlesses, 
And you have, like, I think what... Oh, no, he's not playing the Oracorio. Yeah. So he opted for the Latios over the Oracorio. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good matchup for Ian, I think, no matter which way you look at it. Uh, one but important note, he also does not play... Or he does play the Muscle Band split. So yeah, uh, there's quite a few outs Ian had. But Ross just keeps chugging along. Yep, yeah, he found himself uh, an Ultra Ball, finally, and so he used that to discard those two uh, useless fighting Pokemon in his hand and grabbed himself a Combi. Double Colorless goes onto the Vespaquen. Does he have enough for a knockout? I don't believe he does. Is there maybe a Choice Band going on the active as well? Yes, there is. Just get it out of the way. And it looks like it's literally... Uh, it's four, so yeah, no, not... Yeah. Enough for knockout 60 just yet. Damage, uh, minus 20, so parallel city, so it does 40. That's not what you're looking for. No, that <laughs> is. Your B revenge on like turn three. Yeah, that's a, it's a free hit knockout. Oh, he, he didn't B revenge. <laughs> he uh, intelligence gathering. Draw uh, until you have six cards. Yeah, and uh, that is that's a very, very uh, clever move from Ross. Re recognizing that uh, doing B revenge here doesn't really get him anywhere, just opts to use intelligence gathering instead to draw more. Literally does no damage because of the damage reduction from the parallel city, but it's still a better outcome for him. Yeah, Ian's like, ah, oh, yeah, I can ace the roll the next turn. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, no, can't do that anymore. Uh, and then with Ian having Guzma, he's not actually taking a knockout here on the Vespaquin. He's just taking a knockout on the Combi. Yeah. Granted, it's a pretty easy knockout with this uh, Tapu Lele. Yeah, it is. Uh, obviously, the only consideration now is that uh, the Kobe goes down, so now Ross can, of course, make use of his teammates, which will yeah, enable that, him... That'll be very important here. Yeah, enable him to grab any two cards he wants, and that should let him finally get back into this game a bit more properly. Oh, he got an Ultra Ball here, too. Oh, so he, yeah, he'll be able to get a lot of Pokemon here. Uh, we could see teammates for uh, that... One field blower if he has it in his deck, and then field blower unlocks the shaman in his hand as well. Yeah. But he, it, he just has to be a bit careful, of course, but because the way Ross loses this game is basically if uh, or one of the ways Ross loses this is if he just is too willy nilly with playing his items, then Ian can just trade one prize attacker for one prize attacker using his uh, Garboda, and then you know he's trading very well then um, with uh, Ross's Vespaquens. Yeah, but his guys are gonna. Knockout, all right. Anyway, like you kind of reach that critical mass going into like turn four, because uh, he's going to need to play down at least one battle compressor here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just to be able to do some amount of damage, and he needs the field blower to get rid of the parallel, so he can do more damage. Like field blower is basically plus twenty damage. I can use my abilities this turn. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's a fair way of uh, putting it. I was really agonizing over this decision still. Looks like it's an Eevee. It's going to be his Pokemon of choice. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, the, the Eevee, and I think its attack name is Palette of Friends or something. <laughs> oh, well, it no basically way. does uh, double colorless, 10 damage, does 10 more damage for every different type you have on the bench. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, there's the teammates, yeah, finally from Ross. So now he's going to. We, we saw him discard the Shaman too, as well. And look, there's that parallel city. Yeah. Uh, just a card he cannot play right now. Unless he decides to field blower to discard the parallel city and then play his own. Looks like Bass Compressor is going to be one of his card choices and a versus seeker, perhaps. This this could be just a point of field blower might be prized. Uh, and that's why he opted to even discard the Shaman in the first place. Uh, really trying to set up for yeah. next turn. That would certainly um, make sense. He ultra balled for that EV. He has another Battle Compressor in hand, so... I think he might be able to get the knockout this turn. Even through the Parallel City. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. Compressor will be able to discard a few more Pokemon, of course. Yeah, that Lele can go. Definitely don't want to put that down. But you see, like, what I'm saying is, by now he's going to have, like, five, six items in the discard. That's yeah. enough to knock out everything in his deck. Yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense. So, essentially, because it's so easy to get to that critical mass anyway, it's almost... It's almost irrelevant in that sense if yeah, you I, play too many items. I think it's probably easier for you to just chain your attackers than them to actually change Garb. Or yeah, that makes sense. Another Compressor from Ross as well, so you see even more Pokemon hit the discard. The Field Blower is in the deck, by the way. Interesting. Uh, so he just uh, chose this route of play and maybe even could versus Seeker for teammates next turn. Yeah, that's true as well. And then uh, he can... 
make better use of his abilities that way, but I guess he just planned out his turn in a way where he thinks that if I don't need my abilities to take the knockout, then it doesn't make much sense for me to make use of them. Discards that instruct the Ranguru and the rest of the unknowns in his deck. So that is seven or eight Pokemon hitting the discard this turn, plus the six from before, so 14. Uh, so yeah, it should be enough. Yeah, 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 yeah it should be. But the, the choice band will uh, get him there. And yeah, he's doing there the we have be revenge for a hundred and ninety damage here. It's a knockout. Back to back to Ian, who has a teammate to his own. Which, so. which is what was one of the strongest points of this Drampa Garboder deck for all of its like dominating tournament wins is. It can abuse teammates almost better than anyone else. Yeah, it's, uh, it's such a solid card in here. Um, so for those of you who uh, may not may not be aware, of course, are teammates. If you're one of your opponents, one of your Pokemon was knocked out by your opponent last turn, it just lets you grab any two cards from your deck when you play it. So yeah, incredibly strong card. Just uh, with um, both, both these decks being able to sort of make use, use of it, but especially uh, Drampagarbo Bodo when it, that was that was the first around, is able to make really really strong use out of it. Yeah, and it's probably what we're going to see just being chained back and forth here. Uh, that rainbow energy is very important to get on the board, though. It turns on Berserk on being able to knock out Pokemon over 80 HP. Yes, so no, no, it's a very, very important find for Ian there. Uh, Berserk, of course, uh, does more damage if there's one of, your, one of your Pokemon on the bench has damage counters on it. So uh, there we know there's just the Trash Lounge taking the knockout on the... Vesper Quen, of course, the Ditto Prism won't go to the discard pile, will go to the Lost Zone, but I'm fairly sure that Ross has enough Pokemon in his discard pile now to KO anything that Ian puts, puts out anyway. Well, with choice bands at least. And there we have his hand. He has the Ultra Ball he drew for the turn. There is a couple executes in the discard, I believe. Yeah, and there is. Or no, he only plays the one, but uh, if he does opt to go for the Fuel Blower this turn, then he could have a pretty explosive game plan from here on out. Does he have enough cards in hand to work with to pull it off, though? His hand size is quite small. He does have access to teammates, so that will sort of help him. Oh, he does have an Ultra Ball as well. Yeah, so. I think, unfortunately, he drew another Versus Seeker, which he, I think, just draw any other card, you discard it. Yeah. Because you don't want to discard the Special Charge because you're looking for Double Colorless. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, And if you're going to have the teammates for it, then it's a little bit awkward, but... We see him bringing that double colors to yeah. the front. Yeah, well, Thankfully for him, he did get a combi from the prizes as well. Okay, that, so that helps uh, him out. Replacement attacker, essentially. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good find for him. And with ooh, with that, there's two double colors off the teammates here. I think he's thinking that because he has the flare on in his hand already and an ultra ball, he has the attackers he needs ready to go. Well, yeah, he much. also has the verse seeker too. Yeah, so getting... Oh, okay, he's definitely going to get one double colorless. Maybe he's actually deciding to get, yeah, a second Combi instead. He just really wants Are to make sure. Are you sure? I'm fairly sure I saw green. Fast. Maybe it was Vesper Quen instead. I'm fairly sure I saw green. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. All right, here we go. Double colorless coming down on that Plasma Flareon here. <laughs> the only Plasma card to really survive the <laughs> format. Yeah, it does seem uh, that way. Outside of, you know, cores. Uh, and also some people deciding to play Speed Lugia again all of a sudden. I'm mean, not, not sure if you've seen that. That deck oh, is... Oh, man. I, I don't know if we'll see that this week. I, I don't think so either, but that deck is crazy. I would love to see it again. Um, Counting the items here, there is definitely a ton. Yeah, I basically knock out everything you have. Yeah. And and this, and is, then. this is where Grandpa Garb as a deck excels, yeah. right? Uh. Bring up my attacker that can knock out anything you do. I lock your abilities, and then I'm going to end you to like three cards. Yeah, so it's the, the Garbatox and end combo has been one of the game's most powerful one two punches, pretty much, as long as it's been around. I think, remember Robin, Robin Schultz's interview when he won Worlds? That pretty much, he, what he said in his, his interview, how, did, oh, how did you, you know, win that oh, Garbatox and end? Yeah. Like that, that was just his answer. That was all that was really needed. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. Yeah. Right, looking at Ross's hand, it doesn't look too good for him. I think a Rescue Stretcher, a Vesquin, and maybe an Ultra Ball. Uh, so something to work with, but yep. he might need to draw that Verse Seeker for the teammates or even the Field Blower. Yep, there's a mysterious treasure discarding a Parallel City, finding another Trubbish. 
Ross just really needs to find a Guzma here to KO that Dramper. That's how he gets back in, uh, back there ahead on the prize trade. Because currently, well, actually, no, he doesn't need to do that because uh, Ian yeah, is... he can just do it later on. Yeah, because Ian just took a prize. So assuming Ross takes one, if they trade one shot for one shot like this, Ross will win oh. anyway. Ross just has maxis in his hand. That is insane. All right, so uh, it was a maxis instead of the ultra ball, but he drew a float stone. So evolve into Vestaquin. Rescue Stretcher for another Vestaquin, evolve it, and then uh, play down your foot on a Vestaquin. Who cares? Maxis. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, there it is. Float Stone on a Pokemon Free Retreat. Man. Why not? What an end. <laughs> that, that, that's, oh, I even think Rob like, clapped a little bit. Like, that deserves a clap. <laughs> Can't argue with that, really. Getting yeah. Glade out, that's another attacker for Ian to be worried about. Glade? Cleanly knocks out Drampa. Yeah, that's and he oh and Ross hits the double colorless as well off of the draw off the what maxis. What a turnaround! That Ross is, has done this game. I, considering that star, it is pretty amazing that this is what we're looking at right now. And he has two for secret and a computer search in his hand. This is insane. Uh, Jer Jeremy, are, are you okay? No, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, that's that is Th crazy. This is the one problem for Drampa Garb too as well. It's like you Garbatoxin end them, but if they draw out of it, your whole game plan is Garbatoxin end again. Yeah, and hope they don't draw yeah. out of it again. Like that's <laughs> pretty much all the deck can fall back on. It and is. that's exactly what it did. <laughs> I mean the theory goes that you do it enough and eventually it does just stick and especially because Ross is only drawing two now. Um but even so yeah, also one important part, uh, I don't believe before the end last time Ross was able to play the special charge. Right, okay. So I so, think there's going to be three double colorless in the discard. So yeah, that definitely changes things. But again, all he needs is a double colorless and a supporter. And he could take the knockout. Yep. I think, I think, I think uh, what's going to end up happening here is that I think Ross is going to draw like uh, Sycamore special charges. Oh, sorry, Juniper special charges, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Let, let's see, yeah. There's Berserk. Oh, no, oh, no right to said actually, because uh, of course, uh, not enough damage. Oh, no, he could have taken the KO, actually, with uh, Berserk. Why didn't he? With, with yeah. the Muscle Band. He drew Juniper. Uh, Battle Compressor, check to see if you have your double colorless left yeah. in your deck. Yes, you do. Yeah. You also have Special Charge and Computer Search. Wow. Oh, wait, does he? I... No, but I'm wondering why Ian didn't take the KO. If he had the Muscle Band to do Berserk for 100, he just did Righteous Edge instead. Yeah. Uh, not too sure. Could have been maybe just mis like miscalculation or something like that, maybe. But uh, I mean, he, he pretty much loses if Ross gets a double colorless anyway. Uh, but there we see Battle Compressor mm -hmm. really just getting rid of all the cards Ross does not want to draw right now. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't has that Juniper discarding the parallel sitting in his hand. Another card he doesn't want to draw, so yep. it's fine. There you go. We need <sighs> Juniper. Does he find what he needs? Has quite a few outs here. Six and seven. Uh, I don't see it. I see a computer search, but he would have needed the special charge here. There is a field blower. Oh, okay. And a shaman as well. He could oh. be. He has a special charge in his hand. That's got to. That's got to guarantee it surely, because well, not guarantee it, but combined with the premonition from Galade, you've got to think that there's no way he misses at this point. Well, his hand is. Kind of bogged down a little bit. He might only be able to draw one or two cards, but that might be just what he needs. Well, with a premonition, that doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> All yep. right. Special charge. Put two double colorless back into his deck. In fact, the, in fact, the premonition is what makes him his hand being clogged okay because yeah. he's kind of like digging for that much regardless. Yeah, but, and it was my mistake. He did not have the computer search in hand, or else that would have been just yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a premonition. premonition. Well. Is there a double colorless on the top of the deck? There's three in there. Yep, moved it so fast. <laughs> yep. Well, actually, well, you would think he would just show it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he, he has to have it. Double colorless. Yeah, there you go. Sensitive blade knockout. Mm -hmm. All right, what a comeback! Yeah, that was an amazing play from Ross Corfin there, able to you know come back for a really horrendous start to just uh, take a demanding, a controlling lead in the game later on, and just yeah take it, move on to game two. Yeah, uh, the Guzma on that Garboder with a choice band bottom enough time to intelligence gathering to kind of set up his hand, and then those.
Yeah. And yeah. yeah. No, you don't have to explain anymore. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, everyone has been on both sides as well. Everyone has uh, been like, you know, oh, you know, I managed to uh, oh, go yeah. so far. I end my opponent to nothing, yeah. and I won. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. And then, oh, man, I got my opponent end me to nothing in day one. Yeah. It's like... All right, yeah. and going first here has that mysterious treasure, a uh, great utility card in this Grandpa Garbodor deck, or anything really with Psychic or Dragon yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, able to let you search your deck for a Dragon or Psychic Pokemon as long as you discard a card from your hand. Of course, a uh, lot more versatile than Ultra Ball uh, in the set. Well, so a lot less for a lot less punishing than Ultra Ball. I a lot guess. less punishing, but less versatile. Yeah, exactly. That's I got the two mixed up. I know what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> what, what would I do without you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and there we see uh, Professor Juniper discarding N and the Versus Seeker from Ian turn one. Again, just getting out the basics he needs and not really caring about much else. Nope. Rainbow onto the Trubbish again. That's pretty good. That's going to mean some potential access to Drampa's big uh, Berserk. And now here, so with Ian playing so many Parallel City in his deck, uh, I believe the full count is three, which most decks aren't even playing Parallel City anymore. Uh, one of the great calls here from Ian this weekend. But you want to limit your opponent's bench right now, even though we saw him earlier in the first game, to the red side to Ross. Uh, both sides are actually very good, but when you are able to go first and just limit your opponent's bench, that means their whole Maxi's game plan gets so much harder. Yeah, and this sort of strategy is a lot more effective in a format where you know that stadium counts are generally lower. Like, people maybe play, like, one or maybe two stadiums, maybe one field blower. It's not very common for... I mean, maybe some Zorok variants, like, if they're especially aggressive, might play two field blower and a high stadium count. But other than that, against everything else, you're pretty much good to go. And or rather, if you play down a parallel city, you can have some confidence that it's probably going to stay there. And then... Uh... There's no saying that he can't just field blower his own parallel and then play it down the reverse side oh, yeah, uh, exactly. later on in the game to get rid of Tapu Lele and maybe a Drampa because your opponent got Gallade in play. Like, yeah. uh, the deck has a lot of options, and that's one of the reasons why it was so popular in the past. But so far, it's been outclassed by Zorark. Yeah, and uh, that's just been why Zorark has uh, been doing so well. And uh, I mean, this part, part of it is, uh, I guess you'd call it the, the Pendarvis factor as well. But, you know, it's uh, even not just in, in Jimmy's hands. Like, that deck has just done so many well, regardless in so many other formats and, and with so many different players that it's uh, just hard to argue against the, just the sheer power of it. So this is a pretty good turn from Ross. Definitely a lot better than we saw his turn one Game one. The, the benchmark for that was pretty low, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> farewell letter, ditto pass. Yeah. Not much going there. And yeah, he still won that game. So yeah. <laughs> like. And here we see the Battle Compressor again, just discarding those Pokemon you don't really want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looks like it could be a Gallade, a Choke, and an Execute. Yeah, definitely happy to see all those go in the discard pile. Um, Gallade just so you can maxi it back in Machoke just because you're never really going to make much use out of it against Drampa Garb. Uh, let's see. One interaction I actually love a lot from his deck is he actually does opt to play the Lolan Muck. Just one copy. No no Grimer. No Lolan Grimer. No. Uh, so he really only can use it with Ditto Prism. But you would think, well, don't you play like Shaman's Execute and all that stuff? But he plays that Deep Striker. Deep Striker gets around. It's a stage one. Sprint. Yeah, all four cards. Like, exactly, and okay. and he's playing the Blitzel as well, so he doesn't need. He can like have both out. Yeah. He can have the Muck out and the Zed Tracker at the same time. Not only that, but I mean, it means that if you do happen to run into against some some you know someone playing the unknown damage deck, you just evolve on win. Yeah, you just evolve on the Muck, and uh, and then your opponent just really scoops up their cards and says game two. <laughs> yeah, I think funny enough, I think one of the decks Ross was debating about playing was that unknown damage deck. Uh, but last minute decided, yeah, it's not good enough. I'm yeah. going to go with this. Clearly, it seems to be a wise choice so far. He's uh, yeah, won a fairly convincing turnaround game one and is uh, looking like he's going to be in fairly good shape for game two as well. I mean, what? He already has like eight Pokemon in the discard. Not bad. No, not at all. And he's doing all the setup without really using any GXs either. He does play two Shaman EX and two Tapu Lele GX, but he's not had to use any of them so far. And look at his board already. Yeah, just he does not opt to go into the muck. You don't really care about your opponent's abilities. 
uh, especially since they're playing Garbatoxin themselves. The only real thing you're shutting off, at least this early, is that pseudo Wudo, and you don't care about that, especially with Parallel in play. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, just very, very much not a relevant factor in this match right now. Yeah, uh, I'd, I mean, I'd much rather see that Ditto evolve into an attacker. Yeah. Uh, it gets kind of awkward, though, if Ian decides to go for that Garbatoxin again, because then it's just useless. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, that's I don't know which way it works out, that's going to have to be something that's uh, considered. Ian does go for the end there. Both players will be drawing six at this point. I imagine he, d at this point, he just wants to dig for something to KO on the Blitz or just you know start picking up the tempo, start taking prizes. I'm not yeah, sure again, this whole matchup is based on trading your attackers, and most of the time, Vespaquin just trades better. Yeah, That's why a card like Oracorio was so popular in this Drampa Garb deck, uh, although Ian did omit it from his list for that Latios. So he has no real way of getting like big two prize turns. And I think because of that, as long as Ross is able to just continue his setup and sneak in a GX knockout or two, he'll be pretty convinced with this matchup. Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, think, think he needs that same as well. There is uh, the Trash Lanch Garboda from Ian. Also, the rainbow energy on there, he will Trying be... Trying to fake us out a little. Yeah. <laughs> There's a retreat. And with plenty of items in Ross's discard, down goes the Blitzel. But with that ditto, he has that Zeep Striker in hand. Not too shabby. No, no, not at all. You can just, yeah, go uh, for that uh, discard his hand, draw four cards. That sprint ability, of course, would uh, be very, very good. I think there's nine Pokemon in the discard as of right now. I think they're putting out a, a, a little die to indicate how much it is, but it's just off camera, so we can't actually <laughs> see it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's the count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight. Eight Pokemon. So it's doing 100 damage currently, which is not too bad, but He needs not one more Pokemon, but he can just sprint his hand away and actually... Get it that way. Yeah, that he can. Pokemon. Yeah, he actually can. Wait, where's that uh where's that target whistle when you need it? <laughs> Although I think he was debating to see if he could max ease this turn, but I don't think it's in the cards for him. Well no, he can play down the Eevee, he can play the rescue stretcher, he can play the shaman and not draw. I think he actually could do it. Unless I don't, uh, what's that last card in his hand? Double colorless? Yeah, maybe he can do it actually. Uh oh, okay. This is he has to unknown because parallel city. Uh, and he's got the battle compressor. No and way. Maxi's this turn. That is How insane. Ross, stop it. <laughs> Save some for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> the draw of all, dra all draws. Battle compressor just getting rid of uh, all the stuff he really d doesn't need right now. And, and enabling. battle compressor was the perfect card like, because you needed more Pokemon. You, you needed essentially two more. Or no, one more Pokemon. No, no, it was two more. Cause he, oh, yeah, uh, four. Because he puts one with Maxi's in yeah. play. Oh, that is so good. That's why he's one of the best. Yeah. Just uh, drawing battle compressors off of uh, Farewell Letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, not too shabby. No, not, not too, shabby. too shabby at all. Um, I mean, he's I mean, just getting rid of some more cards, which he uses in the matchup, getting rid of that a lot of Muck, the uh, Mr. Mime, and uh, also the, the Unknown. I think uh, he, he's like, you know what, Unknown, you've done your job right now. You can... Uh, <laughs> I don't I've mind. used you to the fullest. Yeah. It is now time to retire. Yes. Which, funny yeah. enough, that was the old... I, I understood that reference. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the old unknown yeah. R, which has the same exact ability. It was yes. called Retire. A little, little old school TCG knowledge yeah. for you folks at home. It's, it's, not, it's not even throwback Thursday. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and even has the double colas to go on that Eevee as well. But yeah, okay, never mind. Oh, okay. He doesn't want to go for it. Oh, I, with the parallel, you can't. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. We're, okay. we're so dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> uh, like, like we said earlier, we're, we're bad at this game. That's why we're here. At least you had Sprint. Yeah. It was really hyped to think about it, though. Yeah, yeah it, it was. And actually, to be fair, doing, this, doing it this way is probably better anyway, because now he doesn't have to bench the Shaman. And like benching the Shaman here would yeah. probably just be bad, regardless. He drew an N off the Sprint, though, so that is just something to refill his hand even more. Yep. Puts, puts Ian down to five cards in hand, too. Not that I imagine it'll make too much of a difference at this point. Yeah, uh, Ross's setup is looking pretty sweet right now, especially since there's no real threat of Garbatoxin no. coming from Ian's side of the field, because if he wants to keep chaining his attackers, he's going to need Trash Lanch. 
uh, Drampa is not doing enough damage to even take a knockout on the Vesquin without a muscle band. So if Ian gets a muscle band, then he can go for Garbatoxin. Yeah. But then I still think he would need another Trubbish. Yeah, yeah, he would. And uh, that's not ideal no matter which way you look at it. What's Ross going to do now after the Zen anyway? He's counting his Pokemon, making sure. Okay, yeah, I have enough. Yeah. Oh, and he's uh, very kindly put it on camera now as well so we can like see what's going on. That's uh, Isn't that nice? He's the real MVP. He, he is. And then B Revenge taking the knockout here. 120 damage. Or no, 140. Parallel is not reversed. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. Double colorless muscle band coming down on that drain. Oh, that's a, it's a double double, as they call it. <laughs> I, I actually prefer that in this matchup just because you want your psychics for trash line. Yeah, yeah, sure, actually. That's probably, that's probably just better. Um, wow. Has the rescue stretcher for that trubbish as well. But yeah. there is a trash lunch in the discard now because it just got knocked out. Yep. Uh, he will have to find, I think, his other, his super rod, or maybe even dowsing. If yeah, one could definitely work, um, he could just get find his other trash lunch as well. But he's not, he's only been through one so far. Yeah. Uh, and then of course Garbatoxin is what he would be looking for this turn as well. Just trying to stymie Ross's setup a little bit. Yeah, we just stop him from sprinting constantly. Would be ideal there. There's a float stone. Uh, just a retreat, though, it looks yeah, like. I don't think there's a Garbatoxin coming down for me yeah. in this turn. No, no Trash Lunch either. Yeah, Berserk taking the knockout. Looking at Ross's hand, it is stacked full of good cards. I mean, that's Look computer that search. <laughs> that is a computer search, Ultra Ball, Battle Compressor, and two versus Seeker. I think the only bad thing about his hand is he doesn't want to discard any of those cards. No, exactly. It's, like, it's like all the good cards, but nothing really good. Oh, to look. He drew a Parallel City, which is perfect to discard. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, this, he has this, an Egg in his discard as well. Yeah. This is Pokemon 101, folks. Uh, just draw the cards you don't want to see. That yeah. way you can discard them. That is fantastic if your name is Ross Corfin. Not so good if your name's Ian Rob. <laughs> yeah, so depending on what... Pokemon count is 14. So he's still two Pokemon short. Uh, so unfortunately, he won't be able to like just discard the Battle Compressor and get that away that way. Uh, he could Ultra Ball for uh, a Pokemon and then discard that Pokemon, maybe? Uh, yeah, he has he quite a few plays. His hand is insane. Hey, yeah, he's just thinking through the moves right now, thinking what he's most okay with discarding. So it looks like the first one, there is Ultra Ball discarding... The, yeah, again, the Parallel City, that will grab him inevitably. An yeah, Vespaquen. And then it looks like he's going to discard the Versus Seeker with the Computer Search, and that will obviously get him, and the Egg, and that will get him the double colors he needs. And then he just maxis. It's pretty good. Hey, you Battle Compressor, get the rest of the Pokemon you need in there. No, definitely don't need Tapu Lele anymore. Probably you don't use Shaman either. You could just discard that. I think Shaman has a little bit more utility than Tapu Lele. Uh, just because uh, right now his deck is running low on supporters. Okay, yeah, that's true, actually. And as an attacker, I guess Shaman keeps the double colorless in your hand. Yeah, it does. Uh, it looks like I didn't see a Flareon, though. No, I didn't either. So this computer search will probably have to get that uh, double colorless here. I mean, he, he could just evolve the Vesper Quen and, and retreats, I guess. But, uh, well, but he doesn't have the... Oh, <laughs> Ross showing his opponent his computer search. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> It's like when uh, you know, people played Sage's training and then you, like, somebody <laughs> said, oh, yeah, well, what do you get? <laughs> you yeah. know, you definitely didn't need to show. And there we go. I guess just with Sprint and the Maxis and Premonition, you'll have a guaranteed double colorless here. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it, it's more than likely that it's going to happen here. And I guess it's, of course, a place into what you were saying about the Shaman as well. If you have access to that, then you're even oh, more man. likely to find it. Uh, he did not draw double colorless here. Oh, dear. Has is that a special charge? It is. You can use that to get a couple of them back. And I think there's just the one. There's three in his deck that he missed. Oh, wow, that's, that, that is unfortunate. 
Uh, and he, he has a choice band, another Vesquin. And he has a Shaman, too. So, so he's going to have to rely on the Sprint. And Sprint and Premonition are good, but uh, it only lets you dig one card deeper, so it's not the best. But uh, it's still a very good chance to try to get these. Yeah. I think there's all four double colas in Ross's deck right yeah. now. He's got to get it off this, surely. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And two, uh, two one uh, Vesquin line. Pretty good. The only thing I'm wondering is because because Ross does have the Shaman in his hand. I mean, you kind of would like to use it to draw the double colorless so that he doesn't have to discard the other things in his hand because that, there's a verse seeker yeah, there. Yeah, the verse seeker in hand is pretty rough. So do you just Shaman and say, no, he's you just going to sprint? Parallel City. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Uh. Yeah, it has to sprint then. And now the question is, do you attack with the Glade? And I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes as well. Uh, although, to be fair, having something like Premonition going in with Sprint might be well enough to save it, but if your opponent does get that Garbatoxin active, you could be in a world of hurt. Yeah. That's the... It's kind of the I'm sure that's the decision-making process that will be going through Ross's head right now. It looks like the answer yeah, is yes. There we go. Uh, Vesquin could just knock out anything, so might as well save that on your bench. Yeah. Use Glade to take the knockouts while you can, and a Flareon from the prizes for Ross here. Amazing. And just like that, Ross has gone from being behind on tempo to in the lead of this game, just with that one GX knockout. And that is the power of this deck, and he's really not had to play around Parallel City too much. No, he really hasn't. He's been very sensible in how he's played it. He's been very smart with how he's managed his bench, and even though working with a smaller bench size and even not seeing like the outs to you know, get rid of the Parallel City, he's still been able to make him advance his game state really well and uh, put himself into the lead. The Juniper in grab there from Ian from the Tapu Lele. Yeah, it's rough, though, because the writing's kind of on the wall here. Uh, Ian's not really playing any cards like Enhanced Hammer or stuff like that to deal with the, like, two energy in play. No, it's... Um, and even has a double colorless in his hand that he has to Juniper away. Is there a Psychic Energy? I don't think I see a Psychic Energy, and that oh. might just put a nail in the coffin that, here. That is absolutely Ian. terrible for Ian. My goodness. That's a super odd, but uh, if we ideally ha had that before. There's not even energy, basic energy into this card. Wow. <laughs> that, is, that is excessive bad fortune, I would say. And Ross has just got the best, best of both worlds here. Uh, he got the knockout with Glade and gets to keep it. Not bad. And does his opponent get Garbatoxin? I don't know. Uh, he gets the Trubbish. I think he has... Yeah, just a pass and nothing from Ian that turn. Ross is in full driver's seat mode here. So not only... So thinking about it this way, even if Ian had the perfect turn there and took a knockout, he would still constantly be behind on tempo taking prizes. Yeah. He's now going to be another turn of taking prizes behind on tempo. I don't see a way for him to come back from this one right now. I, I, I think we could even see uh, Guzma on the Tapu Lele. Yeah, just... And take a knockout with Vengeance. And then next turn, yeah, if you don't knock out Glade, I can pretty much knock out anything as long as I have a supporter. If you knock out Glade, then I have Flareon. Uh, if you don't, I have Vespaquin. Like, uh, the, the way he set up his turns throughout this game, uh, he has so many different areas of attacking. Yeah, it has been nothing short of phenomenal. I don't think he has access to... Guzma from the sprint after doing the premonition. If he did, he would have just you know gone for the sprint there. Yeah, I don't think he had a supporter in his hand actually. Yeah. It was just the the two combi, the Vesequin, and yeah. then the Ultra Ball, and then I think whatever he got from the prizes, which yeah. Flareon and something else. Yeah. But so I imagine what he'll probably do next turn is sprint and just try and dig for the Guzma double colorless to win the game. Well, where he just actually doesn't even need Guzma double colorless. He just needs Guzma because he can just go to Vespaquen and then retreat back into the Flareon, assuming that it uh, doesn't get knocked out. And there we see the end to two. Ian Rob doing the thing Garboder does best, and your opponent. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is this is pretty much the only comeback opportunity for Ian at this point. And even then, it's a shaky one because we. Ross has thinned out so many cards from his deck at this point that it's just likely that he draws out of it. You know, even with the 
Well, for, first of all, there's no Garbatoxin in play. And even if Ian finds one now, uh, Ross just has so many outs. Yeah, he also only draws four cards. Uh, I did not see a Psychic Energy or Garbiter in those cards. And yeah, it's what? not looking good here for Ian at all. As if to, to add insult to injury, can't even find anything off of that end there. That is something that is, again, excessive bad fortune. Yeah, when your opponent has Premonition and Sprint, pretty good, especially when their whole deck is like six cards. Yeah. You might even just be debating uh, going for the Ultra Ball to get, like guarantee if he can find a Pokemon in his deck, then he can just Premonition, Sprint to fill up his hand again. Also, it's awkward because he had the Execute in the discard. He could have Ultra Balled with the Execute discard the other card, get a Pokemon that you discard again, and then execute, bring it back, Ultra Ball again. It thins your deck out a little bit more, but I yeah. think with the size of his deck now, it's almost guaranteed. Yeah, basically. He's just he's just going to Premonition Sprint, and if he sees Guzma in the top top five, then he's got it, basically. And even if he doesn't, he just wins anyway. It honestly doesn't matter. It yeah. just accelerates things by turn. He just wants to get it over with. Yep. So that's Premonition. Does he see it? Uh, no. No. Maybe he just attacks this turn then, because obviously if he sprints, there's a potential deck at risk if Ian can stall him somehow, although I'm not sure how he would. So it's awkward, because... Uh, so he does choose to sprint here. But all the Pokemon just in the top cards. Yeah. No, he definitely doesn't want a Juniper here. That would result in him losing the game, which I'm sure he'd rather not do. And I think I want to see that energy attachment come down on the Vesequin. Uh, Ian showed you that he does not have really any plays against that. Uh, no enhanced hammers have been played, yeah. and they've gone through pretty much their entire decks both games. I, I think it's safe to assume that Double Colors could be fine. You don't want to risk it off an end of one Garbatoxin because yeah. you know that can always happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but he is doing very well right now. Another Tapu Lele GX for me, and there's a Guzma at long last. And yeah, I think he realizes his only option at this point is to try and stall out the game pretty much. So. Yeah, there is the N. The one card for Ross. Ian drawing four needs. At least a Psychic Energy and a Trash Lance here. Just to stay in the game. <laughs> yeah, and remember, there's no Psychic Energies that Ian has drawn yet. Uh, he does have one Trash Lance in the discard. Uh, already gone through the one Rainbow Energy. Uh, he has a ton of outs. Let's see what he finds. No, that is it. And there is the Handshake. So and how unfortunate for Ian there, but Ross playing it beautifully. Yeah, uh, absolutely uh, making the right moves, knowing exactly what to do in order to come out ahead in that matchup. And yeah, just phenomenal play from Ross. Congratulations to him. And maybe moving up to 2-0. 2-0, and Vestquin, Flareon. Uh, really just trying to hammer in Maxi's big last tournament. Yep, exactly. Just to make sure <laughs> make you make the most of that while you can. And of course, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you, right? It is uh, such a powerful card. Now, uh, given that we do have uh, a winner, right, we go like, actually have an interview with uh, Ross. So it's yeah. great lead to the next round. So don't go anywhere. I'll take a quick break and we'll bring him in.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm here with our round two winner, Ross Corpin. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. So, um, was, so what, what made you decide to play uh, Vesperquen for, for this tournament? Because obviously you had success with it at Worlds of 2016, so you have like, a little bit of history with it. So is yeah. that, is that this, why? This is actually the first time I've played Vesperquen since Worlds 2016. Well, there you go. <laughs> I took it out of the sleeve, the same Worlds 16 sleeves last night. <laughs> Well, it's uh, just been sat there since then. It's just been sitting there. Yeah, I don't play Vespaquin a lot, but this is the second time. Okay. Uh, you know, I tested a lot of different things, and just it's a pretty tricky format right now, and uh, you know, everything has weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I really love my Shock Lock deck that I played in Anaheim, but Garbodor really makes it hard for yeah, that deck. So I tried a few different things, and Vespaquin felt like I had the right spread of matchups that I felt most comfortable with it, so yeah. I'm running with it today. Yeah, that's, that's, that says a lot about sort of your general approach to tournaments, right? So the general idea is that you'll, you won't necessarily pick what you think is the best deck in a vacuum, but you'll make an assessment of the meta game as a whole and decide what's the best for a given tournament. Oh, you yeah. have to, yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, the best deck in a vacuum, you know, it's very quickly that people will meta game for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you always have to, to see what the meta is and respond to it. Yeah, exactly. So comparing uh, expanded to standard, um, obviously you've played it in both. Uh, we don't really get the opportunity to do it much in Europe, so it's a, it's a bit of a shame. But um, how do you how do you compare and contrast the two right now in terms of because there's such a different in sets now compared to how it used to be. You know? Yeah, I, I yeah I think they're probably as different as they've ever been. Um, I kind of like expanded right now, but I have been testing expanded more because uh, this one and Anaheim were both expanded, so I tested a lot the last yeah. couple months, a lot of different decks. Uh, there's a lot of different interesting combos. Um, on the on the same side, though, expanded is a little overpowered almost because yeah, the cards are so so strong and, and standard is so different from last year. Um, without Juniper and Sycamore, without N, yeah. um, standard is very different. I've actually played a lot less standard this year because the only region I played was uh, early October. Um, so I actually haven't played standard really since Lost Thunder came yeah. out, but uh, definitely, they're very different formats yeah. right now. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, there was a recent announcement about the, the update to the ban list. Of course, there will be unknown damage and uh, Maxis Hidden Baltric going away yeah. with the card which you're playing. Um, right. How how much do you think the deck changes given given that ban list? Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, the the Maxis with Gallade is definitely really important for the Zorak matchup. Yeah, so, I would thought so you know, if the meta stays the same with Zorak being big. Uh, it'll definitely hurt the deck, or at least maybe the deck will have to build differently. Yeah. Uh, might need more Pokemon because you're you're never not gonna be able to Gallade KO a Zorak anymore. You're gonna have to kill with a a Vespaquin or a Flareon. Um, so I think the deck will still be good, but you know it definitely likes that Maxi Gallade. And even even other matchups like the one we just saw, the the Gallade was really put me over the top in both games. Yeah, of course, because you just knock out the Dramper, and then all of a sudden you're just so far ahead that right. you know, not much I can do. Right, listen, Ross, thank you very much. Thank and, you. And uh, good luck for your next rounds. Thanks. Guys, we're going to take another quick break, but we will back very shortly with round three, so don't go.